Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world watching this. My name is Helen Argeru, my nickname Helenique, and I am presenting Women of Truth to you, thought leaders from around the world, global female leaders and speakers who really are working with us to revolutionize the future of women's health. We've seen such an enormous attention being put on health in the recent years, and of course, we've always realized that we need to take care of our lifestyle choices in order to improve health in general. But what we're now seeing is that there are some very specific areas that women struggle with in regards to their life work balance, their identity, their health, their well-being, and their wellness. And so we've called together some exceptional women like the one you will meet very soon to actually assist us in rethinking the way we can uh, work on this decision making in the future to improve our health worldwide. So today I'm going to share with you one of my new great colleagues, Dr. Francesca Richardson, who actually has a PhD in very interesting areas of research. And through her career, she spent extensive time with many women who are very empathic, really. And she's done a deep dive piece of research on families uh, who have caregivers that are caring for them uh, when they have the condition of dementia. So we're going to get into some of that content in her masterclass, which will be coming up uh, as part of the Women of Truth Revolutionizing the Future of Women's Health. And you'll have a chance to find out some really amazing things about how to take care of yourself if you are an empath and also how to be aware of boundaries, how to be very careful about the way that you are taking care of yourself and others and to make very important decisions around that. Before we get to that class, we're gonna to get to know Dr. Francesca Richardson even more. So welcome Dr. Francesca Richardson. It's really lovely to have you and thank you for making the time to work with us and partner with us at Women of Truth. Thank you so much, Helenique. It's wonderful to be here. I am really excited to share some of these ideas with uh, the people that you know, mm -hmm. your audience. Yeah, lovely. We have a very nice way of coming together from around the world. You're in the United States, we're up here in Europe. So we, we also have these conversations as a way of connecting our global consciousness and our universal truth to really help all women around the world watching. And it's a, a real delight to get to know you a little bit better before we we get into your content and your messages for the rest of the world. So you're a psychotherapist, a psychoanalyst, transpersonal hypnotherapist and a researcher. And I've been very interested in your research and uh, actually been on a few summits with you where I've you know, noticed this very beautiful, graceful tone that you have, a very caring nature in the work that you're doing. And I would love to know a little bit more about what was the biggest life challenge for you that you feel comfortable to share with us, of course, here in our audience, that actually taught you something significant in life? This is my first question to you. Your biggest breakthrough moment or big life learning moment, and what was the actual breakthrough about in your life that you feel comfortable to tell us about? What an interesting question, Helene. Thank you. Uh, let's see, I might say that, you know, a lot of therapists become therapists because they of what they experienced early in their life. And so one thing I would say is that I did grow up in a family where there was a lot of mental illness mm. and addiction. Wow. And I, um, because of that, I, I kind of grew up thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> Let me try to understand. And also, uh, of course, you know, wishing I could help. So, uh, so that um, led me to becoming a therapist. And of course, we can't really help our families, but we can help ourselves to grow. And, and, um, and it, it did help me to a certain extent in, in uh, managing, understanding what was happening in my family. Um, but in doing so, I really found I love helping other people grow, helping guide, helping be along on their journey. And so that um, also led me to recognizing the need for self-care, which is some of what I'll be talking about today. Really amazing to hear such a... Um 
a, a depth of experience then firsthand in your own family with mental illness and addiction and then also your journey to become professionally skilled to actually take that experience and help even more people so I can imagine there were some pretty significant moments so if you could um, tell us a little bit about that moment that that turnaround happened for example when you realized that actually uh, there is a way that you would want to help all these people, but actually maybe one thing that you, it sounds like from what you just shared, you realized you needed to maybe start helping yourself. That sounds very significant to us. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. Uh, so, you know, back when uh, there was a, a point in my 20s when uh, actually my mother was dying and um, uh, we had, it was uh, early days in, in the hospice movement. And uh, so we uh, asked a hospice, uh, you know, we actually put her in a hospice uh, place because um, my father couldn't manage it. And um, in the last you know, week or so, and uh, the hospice worker there, she was a social worker and she helped us a lot. She worked with our family a lot and helped us uh, understand what was happening and uh, helped our family come together quite a bit. And I thought she was uh, just so um, helpful and amazing. And then I also had another family member who was a social worker and uh, both of them had masters in social work. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. And uh, then I also had a therapist of my own, and I became really fascinated in um, just the inner workings of the mind and uh, how people grow and, and just through the way they think and the meaning that they make of things. So I, I, the path opened before me and I, I began to see that this was something I really would love to do as a career and that people were doing it. And... Um, and then along the way, as I was a, th a therapist, I also began to recognize, uh, you know, signs of my clients giving too much, um, and and also times when I would become depleted. And uh, there was, you know, an understanding at that point of, or a lot of talk about self care, and so I had to explore what that meant. Uh, what does it mean for a therapist to take care of themselves? And, and how do you model that for your clients? So that was, uh, so I've spent a long time also exploring different um, ways of um, healing myself and um, uh, growing, you know, and in some ways you can only grow, uh, your, your clients can only grow as far as you have grown. Uh -huh. So I felt a responsibility to grow, to um, kind of unkink my, myself, un, unfurl my possibilities so that I could offer more to my clients. I love that. Unkink and unfurl and, and such a, uh, a depth of uh, understanding that must come from really realizing how important it is to take care of the self. So if we look back at you, as a young little girl, eight years old, fresh in the world, bouncing through the fields or through the school or wherever you were. And you look at your wisdom that you've cultivated now as a, as a therapist, as a woman, and as a leader in, in your community, obviously uh, really offering some high level teaching to people. With that wisdom, looking back at the eight year old self, what kind of advice would you give her? Oh, goodness. That's an interesting question. Um, yes, I, I would say it's going to be all right. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, so the reassurance back at that time uh, was, was something really necessary. I think a lot of women could relate to that. Yes. Is there anything to add to that? Uh, I might say, you know, you are going to be able to express yourself and um, be uh, a force in the world. You're going to be able to help people. You're going to be able to spread your wings and expand and do wonderful things. Beautiful. So, so important. 
to give ourselves an opportunity to reconnect with, back with that innocence. And so now we ask one of the most important questions that we ask all our women of truth in this research we've been doing, which is, I think, foundational for us now, especially as we move into this new paradigm, is what do you think is the biggest lie that women believe and what is the truth? That, again, is a fascinating question, but it really fits in with what I've been thinking about. Uh -huh. um, so women are very much groomed to take care of others and sacrifice themselves. And they, they do it they, without a second thought. It's so much a part of our culture that we are supposed to give and ask for nothing. Um, so that is what I would say, um, give, ask for nothing and, and really don't take care of yourself. So that's what we need to turn around. What is the truth according to you about all of that, Dr. Francesca? So part of what I will be talking about, uh, further with you with the, with the class is that, uh, caring is magic. That our ability to care, we have this amazing ability to care to listen, to empathize, uh, to validate, to um, and manage each other's, manage other people's emotions. That's really what women are groomed to do, are, are taught to do. And, and in a sense, do so naturally, partly due to the estrogen. And it's not just women, there are others you know, who are very empathic, but women are groomed. They're expected to do this at their own expense. And so we really need to understand that this ability to change others' reality, caring really changes others' um, understanding of the world, their reality, their beliefs about themselves. Uh, so our ability to do that is powerful. It's magical. And so we have to manage it. We have to protect it. Uh, we have to use it wisely and use it for ourselves as well because it is really powerful magic. So that's the message. And use it for ourselves is so profound when you see it as a currency. I know I have a colleague, uh, one of my um, great power partners in the world also talks about the caring economy, the, that it actually is a form of currency to be able to relate to the world like that. But I. I want to just honor and, and celebrate you for being able to articulate it as you just have. And I look, really look forward to, to seeing what you will do with this message, because if we get it out there, and, you know, as women of truth, we'd love to support you to do that. Uh, it's going to be foundational to help a new generation of women realize how to identify this beautiful nurturing nature in themselves and what responsibility they need to have as they, offer it to the world because I think as you've said it's been offered so widely and I loved how you you talked about the fact that it changes reality it actually made me realize how much energy is actually spent without realizing in actually trying to help somebody else's world change try yeah. transform that world for that person by caring and showing that care to them which puts it in such a different place, elevates it totally and makes us understand then why burnout can happen, why caregivers can end up as wounded healers, why mm -hmm. all the work that I think you've been doing for all these years is uh, so important. And then even more so to begin to help women address what do they uh, actually do with that in the end of the day. Right. So I look forward to that masterclass where you're going to be telling us that. So anybody watching, if you're an empath, or if you are a caregiver of any kind, or you've been forced into that role because of life circumstances, or if you are not sure if you are any of what I've just mentioned, perhaps this is going to be a really important book for you to read when it comes out, but also the masterclass, as you'll get a chance to see that, is really going to be illuminating this and be looking at the magic of caring, which is even more beautiful. So you get a hint there that there's a spiritual nature to what we're speaking of, that there's something more than just the currency of caring, it's also something really transformational that we need to be more mindful of. So moving now on to this women's movement, Dr. Francesco, you've seen amazing movements. You're part of amazing groups of women as well with uh, WAW, I think it's called. And we have you know many different networks that we've um, uh, shared a little bit in our professional careers, many of us as speakers and leaders. And then I know you actually are 
um, assisting some movements to really grow that support women and not just women, some of them too. So if you look at that landscape of women's work around the world, I wanted to give a, a space to leaders and speakers to tell us what they think about the women's movement, because I know some have been involved for a really long time. Some are frustrated, some are really activistic still, some are really transformational in other ways. Others have quietened and silenced um, the complaints and are doing things about it. And others really uh, have some you know, really interesting ways of adjusting things. So it's always a very interesting answer that comes. So my question is, what do you think about that movement? And is there anything you would add or subtract to it or anything you want to highlight about it? Yes. You know, we um, are still on a journey uh, in that direction. Women uh, and the, the work women do needs to be elevated. Women need to continue to be empowered around the world, even in the westernized countries. And this is something I'll bring up in the masterclass a little bit. Women are still paid less for what they do. And there's so much uh, that women do that is actually unpaid labor. Uh, there has, have been some studies on the value of this unpaid labor. So uh, there's so much more work uh, for women to do to be empowered. And when they do, there ha have been studies that show that when women are empowered and educated, their countries prosper. Their countries do much better. So that is the continued work that needs to be done around the world. And I uh, through uh, some of the groups you and I have been involved in, I've met some of these amazing women doing this work. So uh, it's, it's really exciting. And we are all on that uh, powerful journey to continue to elevate um, the uh, women's perspective in the world and women's power. So would, would you add anything to what they're actually doing or where do you see the kind of future of this uh, movement and uh, what what could we be focusing on next it's always interesting to to get answers from the women that are in in some ways leading these movements like yourself well um so you know i think that many um of the younger people are not um maybe that aware of the history uh, of, of what's gone before and how far we've come. Um, so that's a possibility is just, just understanding a little bit more about the, the history. And, uh, but certainly we need to get more people, uh, more women in leadership positions uh, in government and business uh, helping. Uh, and part of that is, um, helping uh, promote care for children, um, sometimes paid care for children. Um, in, in some countries, uh, daycare is, is covered as a benefit. But for instance, in the United States, it's not. I see so many young families struggling uh, to take care of their children. During the pandemic, it's even worse, of course, because they're all at home working and afraid to put their children in daycare and so on. But we need to have, for instance, more um, support for daycare so people can, uh, young families, young, uh, young women can have their children taken care of their young children as they continue to work. So that might be one direction, uh, as well as more leaders uh, across the board in business and in government. Fantastic. I think it's so important also that this is starting to happen and starting to, to shift. There really are some big changes going on. And now we get to hear a little bit about how your work is helping to do that. So can you share with us a little bit about what you're most passionate about in the world and what people can look forward to when they follow you or get introduced to your work? A little bit more about what it is that you're actually involved with. Yes. So, uh, I call myself the inner wisdom therapist because I really work to help people understand the wisdom inside them. And so some of the ways I do that uh, is that I help uh, people become aware of their body reactions, their body feelings, 
many people aren't really feeling much below their neck. And, uh, but our, our emotions are so much integrated in our body. And we get so many messages from our body about, you know, we get signals about things that, that feel great or things that feel don't, uh, that don't feel great. So I often uh, start with helping people become aware of those body signals. Um, and sometimes we, you know, recognize something inside that doesn't feel right, but we've turned that off. Or, um, you know, many times people aren't, aren't, particularly women, aren't supposed to say, feel anger uh, or express assertiveness or power. So uh, I do a lot of work with the body, helping people to become aware of that and use uh, their feelings appropriately uh, to stand up for themselves, advocate, um, and uh, communicate powerfully. So uh, then also, I you know might look with them uh, since I work with many women, many empaths, um, and uh, just looking at the shape of their lives. Is it going the way they want? Um, are they able to ask for what they need and want? Um, are they living small? Are they um, um, are they able to kind of envision what they want and move in that direction? Many people kind of shut down. They've had disappointments. They've asked for things that hasn't worked out. Um, so I do a lot of work with their early life and also what are what is called parts, uh, ego states. Um, and there, I do some guided meditations uh, around um, the inner world, the inner landscape is we have often of different parts, conflicted parts, talking to each other, arguing, and that kind of holds us back, holds the energy back. So as we uh, get to know the inner landscape, then that also frees the energy so that people are more um, able to uh, integrate uh, their energy and move out in the world and get what it is they want, speak about what they want, and um, just, generally communicate better with others around them. So that's um, part of what I'll be talking about in the Caring Magic uh, book and uh, uh, in, in the course. And if you uh, also, um, I will be, you know, I have a blog on, on my website. I will be connecting in a few other places. So my blog also talks about Caring Magic uh, and, um, positive uh, assertiveness, positive power, and self-care and self-love. Uh, part of what we need to do really is uh, love ourselves. And that for many women, there's so much of a block to that. Uh, women, you know, have learned to really put themselves down and kind of be less than. So it's really examining that and finding many ways to uh, open that up. Beautiful and so important, this inner wisdom within. And I believe this is going to be part of the meditation you'll take us through in the masterclass. And of course, we've had some chats also. People should know about how you are um, articulating a lot of the personal growth work around the archetypes and how we've discussed that we need new ways of thinking about our value and our abilities as women. So it's very exciting to hear all the projects that people can uh, uh, jump onto with you as a therapist, but also to read your book, to come to the masterclass as ways of really being able to see the future of this inner wisdom that we have to all be working to create. So I want to let people know about that masterclass. It's going to be on the 26th of May at 7 p.m. Central Eastern Time. This is giving, getting, and being divine, moving beyond the limiting archetypes. And it's all about this caring magic. So thank you so much, Dr. Francesca. It's lovely to spend time with you. And I think it's priceless to have someone like you doing the research you've done about empathic caregivers and also people who call themselves empaths. There's such a big uh, wave uh, at the moment of awareness around empathic um, EQ, certainly uh, intelligence that we all are trying to develop, but also the boundaries that people need when they are more naturally tuned into what others need and how important the self-care has become for every single one of us. So we finish off with our little ceremonial greeting. We ask you to give us three words 
They can be connected or separate, up to you. And they're like a prayer that go out to everyone in the world that captures you and your wisdom. All the women that will never be able to watch a video like this and to all the women who do and are here with us now. These are three words from you, you and your wisdom. So what would they be? Uh, so these are our words for people to kind of uh, hold in their mind or move towards. Yeah, yeah, and that represents what is really important for you. Uh, so I would say self-love, uh, compassion for self and others, and uh, again, wisdom, uh, so many different types of wisdom, body wisdom, uh, you know, relationship wisdom, and that inner, uh, inner knowing, inner wisdom. What a wonderful way to capture our uh, life lessons is to, to look at that wisdom that we each have from relationships, from the body, from so many different areas, like you mentioned, self-love and compassion and wisdom. Thank you so much, everybody. If you want to remember what we've spoken about today, you can think about those three words and now have some depth to attach to them. And of course, you can still catch this masterclass on the 26th of May, 2000. And 21 at 7 p.m. Central Eastern Time. It will be shown here on YouTube. And also, you'll have a chance to jump into our group, which is called Women of Truth Yin. Anytime you like, answer some questions and learn more about Dr. Francesca Richardson. And in good time, you'll also be hearing from her again about more of her research, her book. And of course, if you want to ever just reach out, you can find her on LinkedIn or on her website and see if you have an opportunity there to work with her. And this is a really priceless opportunity if you are an empath or if you are a caregiver in any kind or any capacity in your life, I think it would be very useful for you to find out more about how to have those boundaries in place. Thank you so much, Dr. Francesca. It's been lovely spending time with you. Thank you, Helenique. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.